made for live betting.
Absolute Bet. Made for live betting. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the Chi Invitational European region. We got game three. This is what it's all about. The winner of this advancing onto the playoffs, they'll be taking on Vega Squadron shortly after this series. In fact, the loser will be done in this event. So that's what's on the line. I'm Breaky CPK, joined by Hasbaz once again. We've seen uh, good signs out of both teams. The final try, be able to take game number two, of course, behind a free farming frost on Naga Siren. Lack of pressure from pre scheming, clearly also another way to look at it. But point is, TFT was the victor. And again, why we have a third and final Ten game. So, remaining. always excited for these game threes. Let's see what the draft is looking like this time Five around. Yeah, it's uh, definitely signs of life coming out from uh, both teams. Pre, they looked really good in game number one. Uh, definitely on the back of Undershock Storm Spirit, he was able to get a lot more involved. But uh, Pre's, you know. Uh, just a bit too passive and uh, Frost able to get way too big for them to be able to handle. And uh, I'm just looking at the bands and it looks like uh, these are the standard bands that I guess we are going to have to start to expect. Other than the Morphling. Morphling, he's got through both games so far and it looks like Prees, they don't want to play up against Chessie's Morphling once again. Yeah, uh, respect right there. I mean, Frost certainly is a great Morphling player as well. Again, that was a little bit of an audible call by, by TFT, which I really liked about their draft. And Sure enough, it worked out for them. So with both of those players playing a pretty good Morphling, I think that's a fine option to take out from the side Radiant of uh, Priest Gaming. And then the Doom eventually comes out as well. So we've been seeing a lot of Grimstroke early on. The Sand King comes to mind. Um, off the bat, the popular heroes. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, I agree with you. Either that or the next Assassin. But... You're totally right. You've uh, you've managed to figure out drafting in 7.22 already in one day. You've uh, you've got it down pat. But uh, yeah, I'm curious to see if uh, Prees, if they want to go back for this Grimstroke, maybe take him with a partner a bit more early because uh, they weren't really able to, even though they did get first blood on the bottom lane, it didn't quite Ten feel like that lane remaining. went uh, the faces void and the Grimstroke. It was as strong as we thought it might be Five with that Inkswell remaining. on the back of uh, Movement Hero. So... And maybe they'll go for something a little bit different, a support that's able to achieve uh, a bit more in lane. It's a lot of reserve time, man. Bruce Gaming, already down to 120 of a set of reserve time, but they want to figure out what two heroes make the most sense at this point. Yeah, they banned, uh, they've been tiny the first game, and I remember pointing that out, how TFT looks good with that hero, of course. And they, they even looked good with it playing with Hanskin playing it. You know, it's not even just Chessie. They could certainly run it as a support as well, but um, not better than the Tiny this time around. Again, they already have a Sand King, though. Could likely be Hanskin's hero anyways. Um, not saying they're going to go Tiny, but noticing that change, at least within their draft decision. But Brewmaster will be their first pick. Ten Brewmaster's seven, kind of interesting eight. to me. It's not like... Did he even get a change? In fact, let me double check on that. Uh, we... Okay, he did. Yeah, uh, Thunderclap <laughs> damage... Re oh, well. Thunderclap damage reduced, so uh, he got a nerf. Uh, he's still a, he's still a good hero, but I feel like we're seeing a lot of Brewmaster when he didn't really see. In fact, he received a nerf as we noticed, and he, we weren't seeing like a lot of him before. I don't know; it just it's standing out to me. I, I mean, he's just such a solid off laner against uh, certain heroes. Uh, lots of time you don't want to pick him because uh, we discussed yesterday how if you take the Morphling, you're going to get free crits off the Brewmaster, so it's such a good counter. So maybe they feel confident picking it up this early because they've already got rid of the Morphling. I also like the Dyer fact they've taken the Rubik back. with the Brewmaster just because Barra Strike is a single great cell to steal, and this way uh, you're not going to be giving away split as we saw happen a whole bunch yesterday. A whole lot of uh, brew splits were stolen by Rubiks. Yeah, true. <laughs> So Rubik uh, in tandem means you don't have to worry about that happening. But Keeper of the Light, also pretty good synergy with the hero like Sand King. Will-O-Wisp epicenter combo could certainly be deadly. So that's where TFT's Five mind is at remaining. with that second Dyer pick. And pick. already the fifth ban happening on either side. So the ban's uh, going pretty quickly there. The Juggernaut Storm Spear from TFT and the Naga Siren as well as the Beastmaster from Priest. Wow. Okay, so they banned three heroes that were played last game on the side of uh, Priest. They uh, are addressing quite a bit. Reacting, you could say. 
Yeah, they, they clearly did not have a, a fun time in the last game, and they want to have a bit Ten more fun this time. Remain. The Juggernaut ban, it's, it's something you have to do when you have uh, Keeper of the Light. You can't Five afford to just let them remain. spin and kill your Will-O-Wisp. Um, also, yeah, it's totally, as you say, you know, you'll be able to get off the uh, Ignis Fatus and just force them to sit inside your Sandstorm, your Bio Strike Epicenter. That's uh, so much continuous damage. Um, but the, the side of Prees, they've uh, already probably got their offlaner here in the Brewmaster. Obviously, occasionally we did see it used to be played in the five position, but I feel like that's uh, not really viable anymore. So we are oh, going to see that Grimstroke. <laughs> just can't get away from him, man. He's, he's just in these... Uh, in, in this event, and even in the qualifiers that we cast this last week, before the patch came out, it's the serial just kind of came back. Like I said, it's, it's weird to me, but he's uh, he's being picked up, very popular one. And pretty sure enough, Dyer we'll snatch him up here. You, you mentioned a hero that's also good at taking out that Will O' Wisp, uh, similar to Juggernaut. A couple others do come to mind. Life Stealer being one of them, and then Ursa is also somewhat of another. So perhaps those uh, could be candidates for Priest. You are setting up for maybe a razor response if you do one of those, so that's the concern. But we'll see. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, and seconds. one of the heroes we we saw banned out in the first two games, so uh, we didn't mention that she slipped through now Five into the second phase. Remaining. Is uh, Chessie's TA? Uh, we saw it yesterday, and it just absolutely uh, wreaked havoc for them. So uh, he loves playing this hero; it's so strong. Uh, yeah, I, I remember gonna... him disappointing us with the ags and not using it. Yes, I remember that. I, I wasn't going to harp on that. I, I I managed to get over my disappointment. It seems I, I put it to the back of my mind, but now I can just feel the fury building up inside me once again. <laughs> um, but uh, I was I was just going to say, they, they re people really Radiant enjoy this Grimstrom Rubik combination because you get double lift, you get double Fate Bolt, but there is a counter to the TA right there in the Batrider. We've seen a couple of heroes that have certainly countered Satya in the laning phase. Jakiro is another one. We saw that matchup the other day. It might have been for the qualifiers, actually, where it, they picked up Jakiro into the Templar Assassin to win the lane, and it certainly did. Batrider is, is definitely a hero to do so, but my, my concern with this, as it was that game, and it kind of proved to be the case, Five is that if you go all in with this idea of dealing with the Templar Assassin in the laning phase, um... It's it's a risky strategy, I suppose, because uh, even then the TA still then just started the jungle and recovered anyways and did very well. That was a completely different game, uh, so maybe that's just why it's fresh in my memory because it happened so recently. But I like the idea of it. But this is a funky lineup because now you have four like this is a four hero cast yeah, that could all be back. supports, frankly. And to me, that feels odd from Priest Gaming. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, the final tribe, it looks like realizing that the Slider Prees, they've probably already taken their uh, mid hero, at least in the Batrider. They feel very confident in picking up this Lifestealer. Just denying the pick from the Slider Prees, because you were totally right. He is someone who would have been able to deal with that Willow Wisp. So uh, I think it's a bit of a deny pick, and, and one they also feel uh, confident playing, remaining. because, you know, he'll be very effective against uh, just be able to rage and either Five take down this Rubik remaining. or the Grimstroke on the back lines. Um, so, yeah, you talk about. Batrider, you know, he won the lane, uh, but then TA just recovers. And this is the real point about TA and why you're happy picking her this early, because even if she does lose the game, lose lose the lane, she's not going to lose the game because you're right. She just goes back to the jungle. Radiant she gets that farm. Back. She recovers and she'll come out with a blink desolator able to uh, decimate through your lineup. And I'm a bit afraid that for the side of Pre's, they might have gone for the win the lane, lose the game idea. <laughs> yeah, that's, we've heard that term before. And I think that's actually a great way to put it this game. It honestly is. Life Stealer from the Final Tribe. So I, I can't say I was going to expect it from them. It was more of a suggestion for Priest Gaming. But the Final Tribe says we're dealing with a lot of magic damage right now. Life Stealer feels okay. It, it is a bat rider. You know, you are dealing with the lasso through Rage. But overall, certainly a a, a good pick. And it's one that Nox plays a lot. It's actually, I wouldn't be surprised if it's one of his most played in competitive. I keep saying Nox. Frost, one of his most played heroes in a competitive Dota 2. So comfort there is certainly a thing. LC is a ban from Priest Gaming. It would have been very good against the Batrider, and they do need Zibbe's hero, actually. So I, I love that ban from uh, Priest. Another hero that comes to mind, though, that is pretty good against Batrider, similar idea to LC in the, the Purge, is Omni Knight. I know it's a hero we do not see a lot, but his... Uh, what is it called? The not protective fire, Heavenly uh, Grace. Heavenly Grace, yes. Heavenly Grace does purge the lasso and is good synergy with a hero like a life stealer, especially. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel like the 
there's only one person who comes to mind who who likes to play the new Omni so often, and it's uh, it's Tavo. That he he just. It, he loves the the new Omni Knight. He's the one who's really been making it shine. And yeah, you are right. There are you know a few things left that can definitely dispel the Batrider in the Omni Knight, the Abaddon. But I'm not sure you'd really be able to fit fit it in unless you made uh, put Keeper of Light on the four position. It isn't something crazy. That's where he used to be played uh, until they nerfed his Aghanim Scepter. Um, and uh, there's one more who I think about the Oracle. But uh, again, you'd have to move. Uh, Keeper of Light to uh, the four position, which which I don't think is crazy. Uh, like you very much could do that and run the sanking in the off lane if if you were very worried about the bat rider. But yeah. I don't know if the final tribe needs to directly respond to it. I wonder if TFT is thinking about banning Razor here. Um, they, okay, they're gonna ban an anti mage because disruptor. Oh wow, that's what. So they go disruptor. So it's, it's so it is gonna be a sanking off lane. Oh, I, I suppose Glimpse is okay, and Static Storm is great against like a Brewmaster, so that's... It's not the direction I was thinking, but okay, they, they do go Disruptor, that's throwing me off a little bit, but... So, Priest Gaming could go Razor here, but if they do, it's it does feel like a very underwhelming lineup. It, it, it seems like they need a carry that, like an Anti-Mage, so I do like that man from the Final Tribe, that can just take over this game. So, what else is there? I mean, you got like a Phantom Lancer is... Okay, not really though. You're dealing with Sand King, Keeper of the Light. Uh, the the one who really comes to mind here is uh, Terrorblade. Terrorblade's really good against Life Stealer. Uh, so if they want to go late game, uh, but no, they've gone for the PA. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, I mean, PA is uh, a physical damage carry who brings the burst. So I think the idea is, you know, she'll be able to kill whoever Undershock is able to get that lasso on. They have no purge for that lasso, so you know you're definitely going to be able to secure it. But, uh, you know, TA is more than happy to build an MKB. They can have a lot of magic damage from the, the Keeper of the Light, uh, from the Era uh, Disruptor. I, ooh. I'd, it, I mean, I haven't seen PA in the new patch. Uh, her only real change was that Agnes Scepter upgrade, right? Yeah, didn't so I, I don't think. Of, uh... I'm checking right now. But yeah, no, it was just the Axe. That's it. I mean, they, they must believe in it. They they wanted a physical right-click carry who would be able to carry the game. And, you know, if this does go to 60 minutes, PA will be the, the hardest carry on the map. That Lifestealer is is just food for a very fond TA, you know, once she has that basher. But I think the side of the final tribe, they're looking very scary in this uh, in this mid-game, you know, once Chessie fully comes online. Yeah. And I think they have the magic damage answers for VTune. So I think he might have to go for a Deso into a BKB, but knowing how Vizu plays, I think he might just build a Battle Fury. Oh, he's if, building if a Battle Fury. Hundred percent, he's building a Battle Fury. There's no question in my mind. It's one Vizu the player, and then two. This is a pure four-one strategy. I go back to this is a lineup where literally four of the five heroes could, could be supports. I know that's not going to be the case, but they, they honestly might end up being a sense, right? Because it really is just all in on this Phantom Assassin. They pick the Bat Rider for the lane matchup. They have an offlane Brewmaster who is more of this utility uh, core, not necessarily one that's going to be a hard hitter, of course. So. It is 100% damage based oh, in the Phantom Assassin. No chill. Oh, this guy has no um, chill, they're relying on him. So, yeah, it's <laughs> going to be a Battle Fury. He will need that BKB back to your point, though, too, because BKB. Yeah, does he even go BKB second item? Like, it is so good this game, and it feels really necessary for him for what he's up against. So, it's, yeah, PA. It's not the PA pick that concerns me ultimately for Priest. It really is just the overall lineup that I don't know if I'm. I can see working in the big picture but we'll see jesse very experienced ta player i'm sure he's been in this matchup before against a bat rider it is not friendly but hopefully for his, for his sake he can at least do okay in that lane. yeah it's uh obviously one-on-ones with a bat rider that's never where you want to be on any hero and uh, especially on a ta you know you rely on those refraction charges but you're going to take so many instances uh, of damage especially uh, if he gets a point in the flame break at some point um, the thing is, I do feel that the die, die lineup, they do definitely have, like, very strong snowball potential because the only massive long cooldown they have is over here on the, the Bruce split. So, you know, if this, if this laning phase does go well for them, they might be able to snowball it forward, depending mm -hmm. if, uh, how V-Tune feels. But you're totally right. He's, he is just building Battle Fury, right? 
There's yeah. no way he builds anything else. No question in my mind. If he doesn't go Battle Fury this game, I, I don't think they have any chance. Literally zero chance if he does not go Battle Fury. And I'm not saying that just because I'm disappointed with the last game of Faceless Boy. Like, that was a different circumstance. Okay, I see a why initially. But no, this game, he absolutely goes Battle Fury on, uh, on PA. All right, so the landing phase upon us, uh, there was a lot of harassment. I was watching the bottom bounty rune action, and uh, both teams were trading last or right clicks back and forth, but no one dies, just plenty of regen being forced out. But we'll say this about the brewmaster, not to take away from him, of course, as an offlander. He, it seems like he should be okay in this matchup here down at the bottom against the Lifestealer, and maybe somewhat annoying for Lifestealer, but perhaps back and forth when it comes to CS. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, he, he should be pretty okay. He has that Drunken Pooler. It allows him to trade hits. Uh, it means Frost, you know, if he does get a point in the open wounds, you know, you, you still won't be able to do that much uh, damage to Sedoi. So uh, it's, he is going to be okay. I think they, uh, it, Era, he needs to be careful with his positioning here because they will have a lot of damage. But uh, in the same remark, you know, if they do overextend, uh, they might get caught in a kinetic field or just glimpse back. So, um, uh, Everyone in this lane does need to play uh, pretty damn safe. Hans getting on Coddle is trying to be annoying for Screen, who's doing a pull off to the Watch side and ball. attempting some last hit, but good deny by Screen right there. Uh, Zebe stuns in on a Phantom Assassin. He's going to take some pressure as a result of this, but I think he might have been going in for a last hit, if anything, also just to annoy PA, but having to use some region now himself. He's got a salve in his backpack. He'll be fine, but expect that pressure to uh, certainly continue this game. Um, I'm still trying to feel out this Disruptor pick from TFT. Again, the last pick, Disruptor. Like I said, I suppose Glimpse is okay against Batrider, so it is a decent response to that. It, it just didn't, it doesn't scream like the hero that was like, oh yeah, we really need the Disruptor this game. Let's last pick it. it other than if they really wanted Stand King as an off lane, and I think that that's maybe the argument for it. It's like, okay, we want Stand King off lane, we need another support. Let's settle for a disruptor. Maybe kind of deal. But as I'm scrambling on, Coddle has caught it on camera at least. He uh, he goes down. The Inkswell synergy not even needed. To jump on him. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, but I think one of the thing uh, the things they were thinking about here for the side of the final tribe is that they have a lot of damage that they want to output. And, uh, you know, if they get ahead in a fight, you know, uh, the side of Priest, they're going to be very good at getting away. And, you know, if you are able to take the advantage, Glimpse is the best spell because you just, uh, whenever they're trying to run away, they're brought back right into you. And Lifestealer, he is a bit susceptible to getting kited, uh, as is the, possibly the TA. So they just want, you know, when they do get that one pick off, they want to make it two pick offs by being able to glimpse someone back. So I think that might be the thinking there. And, and obviously, we did see a lot of this here in this last patch, so it is very strong. Yeah, I think I'm just by. I really wanted to see the army knight. I think that's what it is. So I'm just disappointed in that. But anyway, screen gets picked off. Uh, they they kept pursuing him, and Sand King and Coddle finished the job there. PA able to free farm though while they were missing. So that's the good news for for Priest out of that. Onskin's gonna throw in an illuminate, and with the pearl strike all of a sudden a half life. Be tuned. Gonna pop some region. He's like, all right, now you've done your burst. Now it's our turn. Ink swell. It's in range. I don't think it's gonna be enough damage though. Has another dagger, but Donald, a little too fast as he is. 333 movement speed. PA almost going down right there though. So the back and forth continues to clash. And oh, that's a chakra magic. He has another burl strike ready. Oh, I thought he was gonna use it right there. That's not what I like. But he decides not to. Yeah, th this lane is just uh, so obnoxious because even without arcane boots. Uh, this Sanking is always going to have mana for his Barra so I can be able to use it. And uh, PA, not a very high health hero. So uh, we were right about the battle for you, I'm looking at it. And I think she might even try and get the, the early ring of health like we sometimes see on anti-mages. Uh, but it does seem like Priest, they really like this synergy with the Grimstroke. You know, any hero who's able to blink on top of anyone who has that mobility, uh, you know, that they just love using it. And PA has actually gone for the infused range drops to try and help her against all this harass. Five minute bounty rings are coming, so keep an eye up here for now. Uh, well, as I say that, I'm gonna go bottom because uh, they look like they're pressuring the life stealer. Uh, back to the top lane though. Zibe and Hanskin did a great job of zoning them out. They should be able to get both of these runes. Bottom lane, so I suppose that's where it's gonna be contested as Rubik sitting on top of the rune. And Frost running over, but he gets lifted away. We are gonna see the two for two split on the bounty rune. Sedoi walking away, but we haven't really addressed it much. 
it is going as we kind of expected though in the mid lane. It's a 33 and 6 bat rider versus a 26 and 1 TA. She's been jungling a little bit, so it's a little skewed there. Bat rider is certainly winning the lane though, uh, being played by Undershock. Yeah, it's a, it's a bat rider. Even with this arcade move, he forced TA to just have to TP out from under her tier one tower to this shrine, and it looks like uh, they've decided that uh, TA is not returning to that lane. That she's uh, staying in the jungle at least for now. And Hanskin, he went went mid to just try and uh, de push this a little bit and soak up some of the farm. But you know, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if uh, Chessie doesn't return to the mid lane. But yeah. you know, might after getting off some stacks and just try and clear through the waves because with refraction that is something you could do you know you don't have to stay in lane versus this bat rider you push out the lane you'll let him, obviously let him get farm in return but hopefully you don't let your tower take any pressure error heals down bottom and sadoi will survive with the tp play frost unable to do enough damage for the turn so good job of pursuing the kill on arrow though from pre-scheming down here frost is gonna body out yoku meanwhile as brewmaster is no longer in the area due to tping out of course but TA does find her way back to the mid lane currently. It helps that Batrider is not here, and at least for now. But as I said, he's coming right back in, and now he's a regen rune potted up. So yeah, we saw the arcane rune for the four minute mark. He gets the regen at six minute mark. He's of course uh, winning the rune control on top of the lane, which well that helps the the other. But they kill Era once again. Disruptor's life is becoming more and more difficult. Will it be difficult for V two? Pearl Strike, Illuminate, and it's going to be enough. Oof. Okay. Yeah, so uh, all these safe lanes getting pressured very heavily by both the offlaners. You know, as we said, it is very tough, uh, tough for a Disruptor to be able to survive because he's uh, not very tanky and just the, the pressure from the Rubik and Sadoi is uh, really powerful. And, you know, Grimstroke, you might be able to speed up the PA, PA a bit with a uh, Ink Spell, but, you know, he was off looking for runes. Uh, trying to get some warding out, and they correctly identify that he's not up here with his PA. And uh, I think V2 needs to be uh, very careful now because they've already demonstrated they can kill you once, and that was without the epicenter. And now you don't know that Zibe doesn't have a point in it. So I think you have to feel very threatened if you're V2. Thinking. It's being collapsed now by three heroes. They already dusted. They really want this kill. It's gonna go for the epicenter play. No, he can't get it off. Oh, that was a bold decision from Zip. And if he gets the epicenter off, remember, it does activate after death, of course. That might have been at least one, if not two, turn kills. So I understand the reason for it, but doesn't pay off. Error goes down mid lane, and Undershock, he's going to get the other support, it looks like. Keeper of the Light is, uh, well, maybe not. Undershock's going to go down, and Keeper of the Light, he's fine. TA rotates over. That's got to feel good to finally take out this Bat Rider who's been running loose in the mid lane. That's The tier one tower is still even up, by the way. So yeah, Bat Rider is really deep there. Yeah, I have to say, this is something you very often uh, see from uh, Bat Riders, is that, you know, you've dominated the lane so hard uh, that you feel like you're absolutely invincible, and you see them diving tier 1s and tier 2s, because for them, it's always just, I just need to be on top of them. I need that one extra tick of damage. I just need that one extra stick of napalm, because you're always so close to killing them. And then before you know it, you're behind tier 2s. Uh, you've taken so much tower damage that the TA is able to clear you up, and again, oh. they do find V2. Well, the oh, sorry, V2. Wrist, well, V2 is going to go down, it looks like. Yeah, he does fall. Sand King, of course, dying first, though. That was three versus one. Hanskins, Will of Wisp was right as Sand King died. Just not in time. But the fact that they turn and kill Phantom Assassin, I think uh, TFT is overall pretty happy with that, of course. As PA, her farm starts to go down the net worth chart a bit. Meanwhile, speaking of going up the net worth chart, Lifestealer is definitely going that direction. Frost feeling pretty good about how this game's looking right now and going somewhat old school of a build. For the longest time, we were seeing the whole Radiance build, even Midas popping up on this hero uh, post 7.20. Oh, but Frost is going back for the armlet, and maybe we'll see some Infest ganks earlier on. Yeah, I have to say, I, I do love this build. I was thinking that uh, he might do something like this because, um, you know, he do, he is going to get the uh, the damage amp from the TA meld, from the TA deso, and it's just going to be so much right-click damage that you're going to be able to blow uh, everyone up. But there there were definitely arguments to go for the, uh, the Midas Radiance build because you are against that PA. Just offering that mischance chance as well as that magic damage is really nice. But it looks like they, they want to fight early with this uh, this armor as well as the Chessie going to have that early desolator. Oh, that's actually a good point, though. I, I didn't even think about that with the PA and how Radiance you get that extra value there. But Undershock, he's got bots, so he's flying around. 
You were just talking about this, though, man. It's like Batriders feel invincible. It's, he's got bots. He's traveling at 415 movement speed base. You know, he's just flying his wings around. And it doesn't make you invincible. <laughs> he gets caught and, and dies as a result. So that was... Oh, nice haste to destroy, by the way. Right in front of Lifestealer. But that's back-to-back -back death now on this Batrider. So all of a sudden, from winning and really dominating the laning phase as expected, to, you know what? He's 300 net worth higher than... TA right now. That's not uh, what you're looking for with this whole Batrider lane matchup. And that's that. That is the concern for Priest now. That's why you pick this hero, and he's not necessarily doing uh, what you need. Exactly. You pick him for this uh, crazy early aggression, the uh, the dominant. He's able to have it. I've never seen that before. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's. Uh, on the I, recipe, that's that's a pretty big career kill. Oh no no, I I, I love it, but I, I I've never seen it before. I didn't even know you could do that. That's uh, oh yeah, uh, that's amazing. You can do a lot to courier as we've seen. But speaking of uh, the after effect of all this, I, I think TFT was pissed off. What about you? They they they're like, all right, you kill our courier, we kill all of you. Three kills, and that was that's in fact that fight also shows one more thing that priests is lacking. They did not address the will o wisp really at all. Um, I mean, PA with a BKB sure can, can take care of it eventually, possibly, but they did not get a hero that's actually good at destroying that Will-O-Wisp. And we saw it right there coming to play. We're going to see it more, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, you're, you're totally right about that fact. And, you know, th th they were looking for a kill on the side of Prius. And they, I guess they feel a bit bad about what's happened to their Batrider. You know, he's been ready to go for a fight, so they want to now fight with him so he doesn't get turned around on. But that they commit so, honestly so much to that courier that the side of the final tribe, you're totally right. They're mad. You, you kill off our... Well, not... They don't have a furry little friend on the side of the final tribe. It's a bit of a bug. But, you know, they say, uh, you kill our courier, but we, we're going to kill all of you exactly like that. Glimpse from arrows ready. Not using it yet. This Batrider's just flying around in circles. Zibe, it's Costel. Dust is already out. He's going to stun through, and he knows this is the lost cause, however. Lapsing from Priest, they find the kill. He does buy his villa with Discord as he dies, though, so. Uh, Sankin getting something out of that. Yeah, PA was pushing up bottom during this, though. She actually did just go the Demon Edge first, just wanted that straight damage. So, working on the Battle Fury, she's got the recipe purchased as well. So still needs the combo of the Ring of Health and the Void Stone to finish the Battle Fury. So it's still got a little bit of time before that'll be happening. Blink on Batrider, of course, going to be key this game, too. But because of these back-to-back -back deaths, and I guess really three deaths even, Radiance that have happened, he's one, three, and one, that Blink is, is not as close as he would like to be. And he's going to die once again, but again, he gets turned on. They're just not expecting the supporting cast to come in. And that's exactly what TFT's doing. They, they just happen to have reinforcements here. And the primal split essentially wasted by Brewmaster. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it, you called it exactly correctly. They're just not expecting them to have all these supports. Uh, you know, they think they're fine using the Bruce Pit, using the Dust, diving the TA under her T1 tower. But uh, just the rotation's in and it nets them an easy kill on this Batrider once again. And he has dropped so far in the net worth from his early dominance. Used to be number one in the net worth, and now he's sitting down at number five. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Lifestealer, it's kind of funny because, again, he, he doesn't have his armlet yet, but we know that it's purchased. It's just on a dead courier, which is up in five seconds, but he gets a tier one tower despite that. Courier is going to be up now, and I'm sure he's going to be flying out that armlet, and he has 1,300 gold saved up. So, yeah, you did make the point earlier, though, about how Radiance is very good against a hero like Phantom Assassin. Um, so, I, I don't know if I actually really like this armlet choice now, especially thinking about that, but uh, I, I do still think it'll be fine. And of course, they do have great infest target with the Sand King, who doesn't have a blink yet, but is working on it next. And they can play very aggressive early on and just uh, cause a tempo to a point where it's unrecoverable for Priest. And I think that's the idea by TFT. But this does mean that Life Stealer is not going to be as scalable into the later game due to the lack of Radiance. So, it's like a. It puts more pressure early on to win this game uh, than I think it needed, but we'll see if they can come through with it. And they are set up to do so. Yeah, it's, uh, you are very right that, you know, it means you actually do have to achieve something uh, with the build you're going instead of just straight farm where you will outfarm everyone on the map. But uh, I was going to say that um, there is the possibility of you going some sort of hybrid build. And uh, I was, I've been looking at Frost and he was thinking about the SMY and now he is doubling back for the Midas. So 
I'd, I wouldn't be surprised if he does actually eventually get a Radiance in this game. There is the possibility for that. Hmm. Why not the Midas first? I don't know. It just seems silly to me. Sand King, though, is going to pause the game, apparently. Another quick issue for TFT, hopefully. But that Battle Fury timing, continue to observe it. And it is just about here now. 1,500 gold saved up for Phantom Assassin. So yeah, almost uh, has it. You do have to praise Vitude, though, because uh, he got pressured very heavily in his lane, yeah. died twice, number one in the net worth. It's, uh, he is a very, very good farmer here. At That's true. Vitude. We, we see it on his anti-mage, and uh, he's very good at not coming to fights and just uh, getting the farm that he needs. And, you know, maybe uh, we've... Uh, made a bit of fun of uh, Undershock for dying a, a teeny bit too much. But he has, one thing he has done is bought space for this uh, Phantom Assassin to recover. Yeah, that's, uh, that's I suppose, the way to look at it. The, all the distractions that he's made, and uh, man, TFP hasn't been necessarily paying too much attention to Phantom Assassin, so you're right, she is top farm, and uh, Battle Fury now purchased, that's going to get that much better. Uh, this is going to be a Rochon kill, though, unless... Freeze comes here at the last second, but this is going to be a lost cause of the fight now. And in fact, Zimmy's going to try to make them pay. Chesty picks up the HS coming in. Stole blinds apply to a couple, but the Willow Wisp and screen is not being saved. You see, Yoku's like, right, I got to get out of here because not much I can do to keep you alive, buddy. Templar Assassin going to now pressure the tier one mid after the Aegis pickup. Does have the Death Slater, of course, using that to finish off Roshan. One of the reasons I like to get it early on. Uh, I noticed Hannah Midas Dyer's purchased by Sadoi here on the Brewmaster, so trying to give himself some scalability uh, as this game picks up. Diggle the Vlads first, though, so that's, I was gonna, if he went right Hannah Midas, I'd be concerned, but I do think having the Vlads first, at least, is a, is a pretty good choice, and uh, nothing wrong with then getting the Midas to Radiant's enhance his farmer and be a bit more useful as the game picks up. Yeah, I think it's totally as you say, because, you know, you're a bit afraid in the draft that the only one who they have is truly very scalable is the PA. So Sidoi, identifying this, you know, there are a few things you could go for on the Brewmaster, but I wouldn't be surprised if he gets himself a Radiance himself, which is very nice versus the, the, the Templar Assassin, because you just want something to get rid of those Refraction Charges. But really, the side of the final tribe, the sec I feel that was the second Chessie had that Desolated delivered to her, just right into the Roche Pit, knowing they could take it. Hanskin top lane, he's, he's dead. <laughs> Trying to get PA to kill. Uh, Undershock, funny enough, takes it, but either way, they make it happen. So Hanskin being a distraction of sorts, I suppose, but good find there from Priest. As Disruptor is going to find Screen, but Yoku's is also nearby with the Stolen Pearl Strike, making great use of it. Disruptor is getting low. They already kill Screen, though, on the Grimstroke, and now Rubik's in trouble, too. He went too deep, saying things like, yeah, I know how to use Pearl Strike a little better. Finds the kill. The Shrine Pop. Disruptor, is he going to smoke this? Yes, he is. They smoke right after. And they're going to hunt once again. So Life Stealer, we really haven't seen that in Fest Bomb, especially with the early armlet yet. He has the Hand of Midas now, in fact. We were mentioning earlier, but might have an opportunity here in the mid lane. There we go. They jump, they find the static storm kinetic field under shot. He just simply cannot fly fast enough. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, we were questioning the use of this disruptor and because it wasn't a laning matchup against the Batrider. I, uh, you know, I wasn't really mentioning it, but this uh, kinetic field is just so good versus the Batrider because he's used to having free traversal, but even when you're in the Firefly form, you're not able to get out of it. So no matter how elusive you usually think you are, they're able to keep you in there and uh, right click you down. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a bit surprised they initiate. They went so hard in trying to save their Grimstroke because he was just on a warding mission. It wasn't, you know, about the bounce runes or any sort of real objective. And they do end up losing two people in this top lane. So uh, it feels like the side of Prius, it really is all on VTunes uh, back. And you were totally right about the build, by the way, just rushing that BKB after the Battle Fury. You called it. It's it's needed. <laughs> it's a hundred percent needed this game, so I am not surprised to see it right after the battle for me too. And luckily for him, he makes the reaction to get away there. And I think this ward near the shrine is what allowed him to do that because TA ported in with Life Stealer inside the Infest Bomb. We're gonna see our first one potentially. But Phantom Assassin, a little too quick, ports away. And she continues her mission to, to the, get the BKB up at the top lane. She almost has it. And that net worth is also continuing to be very impressive. And no doubt the saving grace for Priest Gaming. It's uh, V2 and clearly a very good carry player. And 
they've shown before that they, they, they let him take care of business as a carry Dyer's certainly can win them the game so they have that going for them but life stealers now back up to the top lane with ta and they're gonna find brewmaster initially right here he pops a drunken haze trying to run drunken crawler even. That's cool right there. Primal Split activated as he got glimpsed back. Has a run through with the Magic Community, but Broomstoke's already picked off. So no way can he save the Earth Brule, and that's what matters. With the Magic Community, I think he might be able to get back to base. That is the blink on chess if he wants to go for it. The timing. One second. Okay. Nope. Glimpse. Okay, they are going to catch him. Yeah, it's at that. <laughs> so eventually he does go down, but they're right here at the tier three towers with their wave pushing in. They have Aegis on the TA, they have Desolator. Uh, I don't think they need to stop this push, uh, but it looks like they just want to take over the jungle instead, uh, taking care of their oh. mid wave. Sinking points right on top of E2, and he had a blur activated. He pops the PKB, and he is going to TP out successfully, but that's his first Dyer's PKB use. It's just attack. simply to get away from a Sanking that happened to find him in <laughs> the jungle. That's not a feel-good moment. And meanwhile, Grimstroke's picked off. And seeing that BKB use, TFT, yeah, they're going to go right back to the top lane, I think, and just try to pressure the tower now. Yeah, well, they do need to be careful, though, because uh, their mid lane as well as their bottom lane is being pressured. So I think that's why they don't feel uh, confident going for this high ground push until they get their waves Radiant's in order. But they're now just fully taking over this jungle, you know, just saying to the Grimstroke, you think this is your jungle? Uh, uh, this, this is our jungle. Just uh, two-shotted by the Templar Assassin there of Chassis. Batrider is able to fly through with the Invis rune. But yeah, Lifestar did make his way bottom instead, and they're going to push this out now. So the SNY just around the corner for Frost. As mid lane, Chesty. He gets lasted, and this is a big kill chance for Breeze, but Zibby has something to say about it. He's got to serve Chesty, turning with the auto attack, but he gets cut down by V Tune. Nearly 500 gold going the way of Phantom Sass for that kill, and he's also going to find Sand King. Strikes in, and. Took several more auto attacks than expected, but still finds a kill there. That's a chunk of gold going the way of Phantom Assassin for those couple of kills he makes happen, but not even needing a BKB there. That that shows you the potential, though, that Priest certainly does have. And just PA, if he's able to get the lockdown from his teammates around him, can do the damage needed to win this game. Yeah, it's a really good initiation there. The Aegis had just expired, uh, so I think... Uh... Chessie just feeling, uh, you know, uh, still thinking that uh, she would have had that uh, second life or at least, you know, the, the remnants of it. You, you, you still feel that little bit um, of the Immortal, uh, Age of the Immortal. But, they, you know, you have five people and at that point, the Templar Assassin isn't very survivable until she has her BKB. Zive uh, trying to save her, but it's a five versus two. You're not going to be able to do much. And that epicenter, uh, I don't think he ever was able to get out of the trees uh, with it because the... Uh, uh, I think he was stuck in the trees after borrowing, yeah. so the epicenter didn't really help turn it around at all. Whoops. That's unfortunate there. In the moment, though. And this is where I look back at the life stealer now, as I mentioned earlier, and this whole mixture of the build in is one thing, but the, the idea of going the armlet, it's you want to be the, bring that early pressure, which they were doing. To be fair, they didn't even really do any fist bombs yet, so they're not, they're not even using the armlet in that aspect. I understand it's a decent farming tool, but where I'm going with this is that this is we're going to start seeing now the lack of the Radiance choice and how that could have been could be impactful now because the game's picking up. Phantom Assassin continues to be the top farmer, and she is getting to that beast mode. She doesn't have to worry about this evasion uh, from what, what the Radiance burn would have brought, and she is going to continue pushing up bottom lane for now. Radiant as well. I think she's even bought something on the Radiant's courier. What is coming out? Um, oh, Desolator. Oh, there you go. He has a Desolator now. Oh, uh, good. Uh, I, I was actually about to ask her why she was uh, skipping the Desolator uh, when I was looking at her items, and it just seems because she already had it completed. Dyer's you know, uh, with it, with that uh, kill on the TA, as well as oh, the smart. farm he's been able to achieve on the Battle Fury. I mean, we've seen uh, Prees do this once before, you know, where they play the full protect one strat. It felt like everything wasn't going their way. This Batrider getting picked off again and again. They lost the Aegis, but now this PA is truly online and she is going to one or two shot supports. <laughs> they walked right past each other with the smokes. Both teams five man smoking and they literally were right next to each other in the mid lane, just far enough to not expose one another, but so, so close. Uh, they end up not finding each other instead. So. Uh, the raiding team does see the dire team in their jungle, although the ward just expired right there, as I mentioned that. But uh, Roshan is up. Wow, that must have been a fast Roshan. 
As double damage also in front of Rosha, and that's when you know things are tempting. Sand King, he stuns in, finds Undershock, free kill on Batrider, and that likely is gonna open up this Rosha now. That's a huge pick for TFT in this map. Yeah, that, that's really most of their initiation, unless they want to walk in with the Brewmaster using Split. Oh, v he's not going to go for this with the smoke. They have good vision of, well, not the smoke with the blur. Oh, he's going to go for Eero. Get yeah, one <laughs> shot. Get one shot, buddy. And now he turns his attention to the Zubi. Frost jumps in with a nice soul line on both of the core. Screech running away. The Willow is placed down. BKB for Phantom is She doesn't care, though. She's just sitting on top of Frost. Wants that kill for a step away. And he infests inside Houndskin. So now Vichy and the BKB's ward off. Can he do something with this? Still, Zubi stuns it with an epicenter. Vichy is getting low. V2. Can he stay alive? Just barely. He's going to survive for the time being. Go for the auto attacks. Jumps in with the Phantom Strike. And the live still kicking in. He's just somehow still alive. And finally goes down. Two Frost in the end. The armlet target for Frost, beautiful as well. And now it's the Doi having a man up against Templar Assassin, getting lift from his teammate. Buyback from Coddle, by the way, as well. And TP's in. What a close call right there. But Phantom Assassin just barely goes down. Yet uh, that PA was living on the edge for so long. When she won one shot the Disruptor, I thought, you know, they, they might have won the fight from there, but very close. And uh, the buyback from the Keeper of Light, they have both their cores. Uh, for the side of the final tribe to do damage to this Roshan. But Undershock is still here. He still has Lasso. Yeah. So I don't think you're able to do this with the Harass of the Batrider. Sand King's up in three. They, when Sand King's up, they, they definitely should commit to this because if anything, it would force a buyback out of PA. But, oh, Chessie's just going to jump in and go for the kill on Yoku. It's four shots later or so. He does find the kill, gets last of him, but what are they going to do? He's just, this is just a distraction at this point. String goes down, he fights back immediately. This seems like a lost cause now for Freeze. Yeah, I don't know about that. The, the whole lassoing up, especially with PA not buying back, that just felt like a waste of time right there. And even a BKP used by Brewmaster, so not really on the same page from Freeze. And it, the inevitable does happen now for TFT. They are going to get the Roshan, they're going to get the Eater Cheese, and we'll see what they do to follow. But yeah, the, the initial fight was one thing, but that right there, that was that just seemed like a poor decision from Freeze. Yeah, I think you're right. It's a bit of a miscommunication. I understand the bat rider, you know, just sitting around the pit, spamming the sticky napalm, just making a just a general annoyance out of yourself to try and dissuade the final tribe from doing it. But if you are really truly gonna contest, you do have to buy back on that uh, that phantom assassin. I definitely agree with you. But you know, in that fight before, we do finally see what V2 is capable of. Almost killed off the life stealer as well as just. <laughs> I didn't know she'd get the first crit. I, I thought it might take one or two hits, but leaving yeah. in on Era and uh, Disruptor there one second and gone the next was really a sight to behold. Yeah, not a feel good for him, but that's that's the potential of what can happen, of course, with that coup de gras and Phantom Assassin, the Desolator. She is a beast. The Basher also now finished, so that's just something else that you're having to worry about as far as her jumping on top of you. And Life Stealer might be found lasso. Is it ready? I believe so, the lift into the lasso and the beat down from Phantom Assassin. Jesus. I still never stood a chance. He's out for a full minute now with that pickup. Good find yeah, from uh, Pri Prius. Hopefully he'll be a bit more survival in the next fight. He is going for this Assault Karas to help both him and his entire team because uh, a V2, you know, with the level 22, you have the armor corruption. You also have the minus armor of the Desolator, so that's the... You know, that's minus 11 armor, and that uh, I'm having a look at the supports here, and that leaves them on uh, negative intervals of armor, uh, and that would even be if they were standing next to this tower. So even without that tower, they're on even more minus armor. So a very tough game for the supports. And I, I think Vtune might be getting to that point where he's out of control. Chessie is going for that MKB, so they will have answers to PA when she is BKB. And uh, Lifestealer, he might go for something like that as soon as he f finishes his own assault caress. I, I honestly think a Radiant still for Life Stealer could be good. It's the, the bird, yes, the BKB, of course, when that's active, it wouldn't matter, but it's already down to an eight second BKB. So, you know, by the time the game really gets later on, it's gonna be six, five seconds and not as much of a concern. So I, I really do think there is still value in getting a Radiance on a late game Life Stealer. Not saying we will see it, but I do like the ASD choice. I think Abyssal Blade Radiant's could be another option for him to just help with Lockdown and dealing with it. They, they, they need ways to deal with the VA, that was clear. As Rubik, gonna get jumped on and picked off. He buys back me to the though, Willowwood, trying to help Soulblind on two with a double lasso, but 
Undershock is getting pulled up by the Willowist now. Phantom Assassin picks up the Jumper in the backland. Cover Coddle's also dead. Phantom Assassin still has BKB, by the way. And now she's going to jump on Sand King. Finds a stun frog with a Skull Basher and gets the kill. A triple kill for BG. And we've seen this before. Life Stealer running one direction. And Phantom Assassin gets on top. Can't get a bash frog yet. She has another Phantom Strike, though. Will she get it? Yes, she will. She gets the first hit after the fact. But Frost is still alive. The SNY helping with that uh, Thunder Ration being less. But it just doesn't matter. Gets run down eventually. And she didn't even use BKB. Like, that's my biggest thing about that fight right there. <laughs> the fact she doesn't even have to use it, it can still do so much. Oh boy, TFT's in for a long run here. Yeah, they used a lot of their initiation to get the initial catch over onto Yoku. And, uh, you know, at that point, once you've uh, spent all those spells, uh, you know, v he's uh, free to either go on your flanking, go on your back lines. And I, at the side of the final trap, it looked like they were doing so well. It looked like they had hit their tempo when they took that first Aegis and took that second Aegis. But uh, these disastrous fights, one after another, sure, your PA might be surviving. But when the rest of your team's taken down, she can't really defend alone. Trying to kill the racks. TA jumps in. He still has Aegis, by the way. Nope, they go for the big burst on Vtium. Now he pops the BKB. He strikes his teammate. And he's going to keep trying to run. Has another strike coming out. Nice spread. Jumps over to Rubik. Good juke. Teamwork there as well. BKB. Whoa. TA committing a B. What was that about? Oh, she got slowed or something, but... Oh, BKB from Brewmaster means the Burl Strike goes right on through, and he's just going to TP in front of Templar's Assassin as well. The great distractions from the supporting cast. Uh, and... They found v by the way. They got PA! Okay, wow. Where, how did they catch her in the end? Was uh, it a glimpse? Uh, I didn't actually uh, catch what happened. I just found they, they had seen her, and she tried to juke herself into the trees. But uh, I'm huh. looking at disruption. Glimpse isn't on cooldown, and that's uh, fairly long cooldown. I, I think maybe she just juked wrong. I, I think maybe she just stuck around too long, assuming they were busy with Sedoi, because Sedoi was definitely buying space for her. He caught every oh, static storm, kill. it looks like. Oh, okay. I'm looking at the death recap, trying to figure that out. Yeah, I, I thought she was actually out of there when Brewmaster distracted especially, too. I was like, I didn't even think to check, but... No, they did catch the PA. They, they catch Batrider there, too. And now it's TFT's turn, apparently, to push back. So we, we have a swinging game on our hands. This is going to be one of those who the hell knows what really will happen in the long run. And for game three especially, I, I suppose we couldn't ask for anything better. Yeah, they were so close to getting the melee barracks bottom, but they weren't able to get it. There's still the Aegis. Uh, no, actually, the Aegis has expired on Chessie. So I take that back, but it was, uh, was never forced to be used. And... I wouldn't be surprised if they hold on to this buyback and just uh, give up the lane of barracks. I think that's what you want to do at this stage of the game. They're not going to give up the barracks. Brewmaster Primal Split could certainly deter this. I don't think they're going to give it up. Batrider's up in five. Yeah, so they're going to get the tier three and maybe go for a shrine if you're TFT. But certainly no buyback needed there. As uh, tier three tower, it's, it sucks, but wouldn't have been worth it. Uh, I'll lift up on a TA as... The primal splits coming back together. Just going to be extra annoying. It is going to be a shrine kill, though, for TFT. And, top shrine well, we know what the next Roshan is. It's Roshan number three. Um, no guarantee it's going to be the Ags. Obviously, 50-50. It could be the Refresher Star. But either way, it's going to be a point of contention in this game, yeah, no doubt. Uh, I, I, I'm just thinking about uh, all the Agnum Scepters this grade. That's... Uh, this game and th this is this is actually something you know really new about 7.22 that third roshan it, it can dramatically change uh how this game is going to go uh, we've discussed the grimstroke ag is able to create that dark portrait dark portrait i think dark portrait yeah okay okay uh i got it right rubik obviously just a standard great agnim sets upgrade he's thinking about building it himself the brew upgrade's pretty good that got buffed uh but we might even see the pa one you know where you kill someone uh, and you just get all your abilities refreshed. That piece is so nice. You know, you leap into the back lines, you kill off a support, you're able to leap from support to support, hero to hero. Uh, I can see that really paying off if they're able to get third Roshan. I mean, Blur having the instant cast time and also providing a dispel on top of that and on a 12 second cooldown because of the act, like that, that's insane to me. So I honestly think, yeah, PA getting that Ags passive would be absurd for, uh, for this dire team right now. If they can manage that. But that's still down the line. And Zerg Roshan's not even up yet, but Reese's trying to make some plays here. Sibby, if it's the play lockdown, that's a kill on Sand King. So they, they go shortly before Roshan could even potentially spawn. And I don't think TFT was ready for an engagement. A great smoke play. Ends up in that kill. They're, they're checking Roshan. They're a little early. 
for the initial. It's 20 seconds still, and it's probably a little bit longer than that, of course. They're, they're just kind of hoping his spawns like, come on, that was our chance. It's five versus four, but it's not going to happen, guys. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a little bit preemptive. It couldn't have even spawned yet. Uh, I was also having a look at uh, how they had vision, and you'll notice both sides have managed to successfully exchange gems, which is always quite fun to see. The, the gem here over on Yoko actually blocks the hand skating. And then vice versa, yeah. Radiance top tower. Not the vision right now. The good good vision here placed by Priest, of course, setting up for that eventual Oh my god, that Roshan was so fast. A, wow. Was was that an instant respawn? It, I just about it had to be, and there is an axe. Alright. Um, yeah, this is this is gonna go down before they have a chance to respond. Are they Does PA pick this up? I really think PA picks this up. Uh, that sounds so good. I think it's really good on PA. Like none of the other Agnes except for maybe double lasso you know the bruise split you don't need the extra spells dark portrait none of them are really good radiant carries them yeah she's she has it we're gonna see it for the first time there's a the lasso oh. on the back line use the axe who do they get they got ta ta dead so as she flies back phantom assassin she has popped the axe by the way she has that benefit Zimmy coming in with the epicenter ruby getting low the willow is pulling her back in and he does go down so he is the only death currently right now he cannot buy that but yeah phantom assassin did activate the axe so she has that buffed up blur now. Cooldown reduction and everything. Zibby, nice job with the Lotus over reflection. Gonna keep running with the blur as they take out Grimstruck. So TFT getting a couple of casualties out of this. Remember, also did get the Aegis on Phantom Assassin, by the way. And they still have the cheese on Brewmaster. So they, they lose a couple of heroes, but they get a buyback on Templar and they keep everything from it. Certainly a 1 5 for Prius Gaming. They're gonna reset. And we'll see now the true power of the Zax Phantom Assassin. Yeah, the side of the final tribe, they did a good job trying to contest that, even after they lost their uh, Templar Assassin. They, they did buy back, they do get off some decent kills. But you're totally right, they get the they get the loot from the Roshan. And uh, B2 and I am so excited to see this. I, I know it's not going to look that different, it's not like it's a new ability, but uh, I think it really will pay off, if I'm honest. It dispels. Like, that itself is is absolutely worth it. And they're just going to jump Lifestealer, and that's a kill. 110 seconds, he can knock it away. TFT. His buyback's on cooldown from uh, a long time before, actually. It's not gold limited, so they probably know about this from the side of Prees. Why he was still around when the team was falling back is a question to ask, certainly, but the answer doesn't really matter because he's dead for a minute and a half more. You mentioned no buyback. The timer's going to line up perfectly, really. It's slightly ahead of the resurrection timer, so he... Uh... There's no way that's obviously just going to pop up randomly. Level 25. Oh, interesting, too, from Phantom Assassin. Okay, yeah, it does get the triple stifling dagger. Triple strike stifling dagger, that is. Uh, well, uh, it, it combos very good with the uh, the Soulbind. You get, like, True. I think it's is it five or is it six? It's e Either way, it's uh, it's a lot of daggers that go flying about. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a really nice combination. Yeah. So having that to benefit from, they're going to push the tier two mid. And the question is, do they go for the bottom racks or do they go for the mid push now? So they're going to stick with the mid. Yeah, TA tried to cut these waves with her Sonic Trap, but she just doesn't have quite enough down to stop them coming in. So again, the blur dispels. Now, it's not like she, I don't think she can get out of stunts and stuff with it. But she can dispel things like the Blinding Light Radiance debuff. And are the right yeah, there. It's exactly as you see, this Blinding Light is no longer effective against the PA blur on a very low cooldown. It's just able to get rid of it, even without committing this BKB. I'm a bit surprised, actually, that uh, V2 just didn't leap in over a hand skin. Like, uh, you, you can blow up this Keeper of the Light. Oh, he actually has a Ghost Scepter. So yeah. I take that back. You, you know you can't get him. Yeah, looking at the inventory, seeing that. So it's just not worth the time. Get the racks instead. <clears throat> and he is going to start falling back. <clears throat> Hop and blur on his way back, but TFT. They've lost two sets of racks now, or I guess the, only the melee racks are made, but still, that's the important one, of course. And Phantom Assassin going back in. That's a life stealer. Glimmer keep Lotus Orb applied. He's at half life. So they are going to save him. <laughs> they clearly have ways to save people that get jumped now, but that was a close call yet again. He, he does have. No, oh, he's still shy of gold now on the buyback. At least the timer's up. Or a life stealer, but not for anyone else. Well, actually, I should say not for TA. TA is still down for four minutes and about twenty seconds now. So, yeah, because uh, she committed to that buyback with the Roshan, and 
Oh, just the, the, the triple stifling dagger when you have a battle fury. Just creep waves are no match for it at all. Radiant's top sure. tower is under attack. Tier two time, keeping the objective. They do have a bottom shrine they could go for as well as far as outside, but eh, I don't think they need to go for that. This PA is clearly feeling so deadly. And lasso, they catch Coddle. Coddle is gonna survive for now. They have to get the purge and it's fine. However, the soul line also applied on two heroes and a double stifling dagger. TA was one of them. She's out for two minutes. Keeper of the light buys back, but with TA dead, do they really stand a fighting chance as that rider goes down? So maybe somewhat as Zibe also catches Speed Tune. That's just an Aegis pop though. Zibe, the epicenter used for this. Having to fall back. He also has the Heaven's Halberd on him, by the way, being Sand King. So certainly a great item against PA. But the, the instant buyback for the back rider under Shocky, you know, he's back into his fight. He's providing the vision with the gem. And now we're, we're, with everything expended, there's no way they can defend. Dagger's flying around, just jumps in onto Sand King, bashes hit, and Zibbe daggers to finish the job. He's out for 70. They also catch Life Dealer over here, the Abyssal Blade Lockdown. That's going to be a no buyback on him, and that will do it. Breeze takes game three, and they are moving on to the semifinals here of the G League Invitational. They're going to play Vega Squadron after a short break, but TFT coming up just short. They could not handle the Phantom Assassin is the uh, big picture story. It's, uh, yeah, you're, you're totally right. This 4 protect 1 strat, it does seem to pay off for our dire side here. We, we really questioned if uh, the side uh, if the side of uh, Prees, were, whether they were going to be able to come true on online with this Phantom Assassin because we saw the mid-game of the final tribe. It was really, really strong with this TA, um, with the lifestyle. And, you know, I'm looking at the, the graphs now and, and you can see the final tribe, they... It was really in their favor for a real bit, but oh, wow. uh, but they, uh, I think it was just as soon as they got the BKB or was it the Desolator on B-Tune, you know, they started fighting with this PA and that's where things really started to change around. You know, the, the fight around the Roche Pit when she was able to one-shot the Disruptor, just V-Tune just so strong in this Phantom Assassin and they didn't really have an answer once it got to the end. And I think maybe you're right. Maybe they should have aimed a little bit more late game um, with that Radiance Midas on the Lifestealer, you know, because this physical right-clicking build is was totally ineffective against dealing with the PA once it got into that um, late to mid game. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you pretty much uh, you, you touched on what I was going to talk about there. It's the the armor was one thing. It's like okay, if you're going to do that, then then play around it. You know, start setting up infest games, go for kills. He went, but he went armor, and then he just kept farming with, and then went Midas, and it's like. Okay, so now you're back to this farming edit, but you're kind of in between on both, and they weren't making these infest ganks happen necessarily. Whether that was map control or whatever the case was is okay, but yeah, I, I, I don't think that was the, the prime build for Life Shiller this game. Um, and uh, the Radiance would have at least given them a slightly better fighting chance in, in the later parts, but maybe it wouldn't have to be fair. I mean, V-Tune was just so deadly, and the fact he's able to get that axe was pretty cool too, so we got to see a, a bit of a uh, that at least uh, coming into play. And I, I love this third Roshan now, and even potentially a fourth Roshan, of course, uh, has all four items, no matter what. But this this Ags effect uh, buffing, it, it makes so much more theory craft and fun to talk about, and and really that much more important to do, of course, the third Roshan. So, all right. Yeah, that's, I was just going to say, it really feels like um, late game Dota, it felt like it could get uh, a bit stale, you know, with each team waiting for the other team to make a mistake. But now this uh, this objective of Roshan, it's really important because these Ags, they, they can truly be game changing. So Priest Gaming, advance on, as mentioned. They are going to be going to a short break, but they're planning to play Vega Squadron now in the semifinals. Uh, I'm getting word from the admin that yeah, game uh, one of the semifinals should start in about 10 minutes from now. 10 to 15 minutes at the most. So, yeah, and that short break coming up. But we will have game one of Vega versus Priest. Best out of three, our first of two semifinal matches that will be coming at you today. So, still plenty more Dota action on Breaky CPK. Joined by Asbest. Stay tuned, guys. Game one coming up next.